and uh, then we stopped with Masalih Morsala. Yeah, I think we stopped with Masalih Morsala. Yeah, Masalih Morsala. Masalih Morsala is the uh, Madhab of Malik. Masalih Morsala is that you look at a subject. Some people may call it Bid'ah. Uh, some people will say, you look at the general idea of the religion, that <laughs> they say the religion came to protect the religion, to protect the uh, life, of the, to protect the uh, property, to protect the honor, the lineage. And we look generally to these guidance and we make decisions based on, on this only, without where there is no Quran and Sunnah. Sometime maybe going some against <coughs> Quran and Sunnah. I give you uh, th their dalil first. What what they call, what they take as dalil. Uh, <coughs> some say that the Prophet Aisha narrated hadith that the Prophet told her, if it was not for your tribe, meaning Quraysh, being new to Islam. I would have destroyed the Kaaba and built it again the way Ibrahim built it before. So they say here the Prophet has left. <coughs> he didn't destroy the Kaaba because he was afraid that some people who are new to Islam will change the religion. The religion, they will go against the religion. Oh, what he's doing? He's destroying the Kaaba. So for they say for must for for the uh, reform, for reforming, <coughs> huh? for because of the reform, we don't want to uh, send people away from the religion. So we he left the Kaaba the way it is. Or the Hadith of Aisha as well, that she said, if the Prophet have seen what the women are doing. The actual women at her time were doing, the Prophet would have stopped women from going to the mosque. At the time of Aisha, with Islam, people coming from the new, uh, these nations, from Persians, Romans, uh, women were not as good as the time of the Prophet. They will go outside, they will take this, uh, okay, we go to the mosque, but then they will go to the mosque maybe putting perfume, putting new clothes trying to look at men and to show themselves to men. Aisha said, that is her opinion, she said, if the Prophet knew what women have done, if he has seen what the women have done now, because the Prophet at the time was dead, he would have stopped them from going to the mosque. This hadith they use it what we call Sadd al and Masalih Mursala, they are two things very close. Uh, they say, yeah, Aisha here thinks, and she knows the Prophet better, that if the Prophet have seen what the women have done, he would have stopped them. So, that means we can't stop them now. Even though the Prophet said, if a woman asks for permission to go to a mosque, grant her this permission, we should disobey him. But nobody will say, we should disobey the Prophet like this. Say, it's religion, we have permission. So we can, like, in a way, you can change a little bit of your religion for the reform, for reform reasons. Uh, this is the, the proofs that they use. Uh, they will give some examples. We will talk about the examples later. But we discuss this dalil here. Now, the Prophet, <coughs> does anyone believe, will anyone believe that the Prophet was, that Allah ordered the Prophet to destroy the Kaaba. And then he said, no, I'm not going to destroy it. Because some people might change the religion or something may happen to the... That Allah ordered him to destroy the Kaaba, but he chose not to. No way. Huh? Allah didn't order him to destroy it or leave it the way it is. So, he looked at the... So, for him, it was... Uh, he was allowed to destroy it. And he was allowed to leave it the way it is. So he looked at the what is better for the people. It's like the prayer. We can pray Dhuhr, 
at the beginning. We can pray Dhuhr at the end of the time. There is time limit, one o'clock up till five o'clock. You can pray at the beginning, you can pray at the end of the time. So you have to look at the people, what is easy for them, and pray it. This is not haram, this is not haram. So do what is easy for the people. Aisha used to say that Mahtara Mahuyara Rasulullah Baina Amrai, the Prophet have never been made to choose between two matters except that he will choose the easiest one. Malam Yakun Ithm, as long as it's not haram. So that is fine. But you can't use this hadith to say, I can change, make something haram halal or something halal haram. And they will give you examples where some people have made halal haram and haram halal. As for the hadith of Aisha where she said that uh, the Prophet, if he has seen what women have done, he would have stopped them from the mosque, that is definitely a guess. We don't take a guess in religion. Religion is Quran and Sunnah. We don't guess in religion. Allah has forbidden us guessing. <laughs> The other, the other thing is, Aisha herself who said this, who guessed this way, didn't stop women from going to the mosque. She used to order her nephew to let his wife to go to the mosque. She didn't find that, oh, she has the right to do that herself. The other thing here is, if the Prophet didn't know what the woman will do after him, and definitely he doesn't know the, the, the unseen. He can't predict what will happen. But if the Prophet didn't know what will happen after him, <coughs> didn't Allah know that? Mm -hmm. When he ordered Jibreel to tell him, to tell people that they shouldn't stop their woman from going to the mosque, definitely Allah knew that. And we shouldn't, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Quran, Wallahu yahkumu la mu'aqiba li hukmih. That Allah judges, make decisions, make rules. La mu'aqiba li hukmih. Nobody can alter his judgments. You don't, you look at the, you don't look what's happening and then make your decision and change the rule of Allah. This is not the religion of Allah. This is haram in religion. I give you some examples. When they come to examples, sometimes they give them some very easy examples. But then when it comes to practice, those who say about Masalih and Mursala, those who take Masalih and Mursala as religion, they will say, for example, okay, the Quran. The Prophet never wrote Quran in, in a book. We write it. This is Masalih and Mursala. Allah, the Prophet never wrote Quran. No, actually, the Prophet used to write Quran every time. The, uh, an ayah is revealed, the Prophet will call someone, Zayd ibn Thabit, uh, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, his writers, and he will write, ask them to write the Quran, to write it down, the ayah that has been revealed to him. Why he didn't write the full Quran? <laughs> because the full Quran was not available then. But Allah called it a book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so called Quran, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ الْعَرَيْبَ فِيهِ Allah called it a book. A written book, that is a book. Hmm? If it was just a statement, he would say that is a statement. So Allah called it a book. This is for the people who say anything that the Prophet is not, has not done is bid'ah. Those people should say it's haram. But we don't say that. We say anything that the Prophet has ordered us not to do, or if anyone come and add to the religion something that is a bid'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did allow us to write didn't, it's not haram, the Prophet never forbade us from writing, so we can write, we can write his saying, we can write Quran, we can, if someone wants to stop us from doing that, uh, he must bring us proof that is haram. So that has nothing to do with Masalih and Mursala. They will say, for example, that Abu Bakr has uh, appointed Omar as a Khalifa. This is Masalih Mursala. No, that is not Masalih Mursala as well. Appointing a Khalifa is not from religion. Appointing Khalifa when the Khalifa is alive, it's not from religion. Umar was never appointed as Khalifa at the time of Abu Bakr. 
the Prophet said, if Abu Ali Khalifatayni faqtul al-akhirah minhuma. If the bay'ah is given to two people, kill the second one. Abu Bakr, Umar was not appointed as Khalifa. Abu Bakr just gave an advice. When I die, take him as Khalifa. Definitely, he didn't say, you should take him. Nobody has that right. The, the, and the Prophet said, if Abu Ali Khalifatayni faqtul al-akhirah minhuma, kill the last one. So, if Umar ibn Khattab, after the death of Abu Bakr, was not appointed, someone came and appointed someone before him, Umar ibn Khattab would have no chance. Because the hadith say the second one. But alhamdulillah, people, Umar ibn Khattab became Khalifa when people appointed him. What, not when Abu Bakr gave, us, gave the people advice or gave his opinion that you should appoint him. He became appointed as a Khalifa after people elected him, gave him ba'ya the way the Prophet has said. Some people may say, they say that the Prophet Umar al Khattab as well uh, had a, a prison. And the Prophet never had prison. Well, he didn't need to have prison. Uh, having prison is, the Prophet had uh, some, some pillars in the mosque. When he need to imprison someone, he used to tie him up there. It's a similar thing. Uh, having a prison uh, is not haram in religion. Actually, the Prophet has said, if you use prison, if someone has pre built prison and then start doing some reforms, for example, uh, say, someone, people are stealing. Many people steal. So instead of cutting their hands the way Allah said, we put them in prison because everybody Nobody, we, everybody's hand will, will go away. Huh? We, we are going to cut everybody because everybody is thief, for example. That will be haram. That will be doing something haram. Changing the religion of Allah for a reason, for maslaha. But if you have a prison, to put in this prison those that Allah have ordered us to imprison, then it's not haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in some cases to stomp so, stomp, so, stop some people. He didn't say how to stop them. Uh, the, Anas bin Malik said that the Prophet, Anas bin Malik narrated this hadith that the Prophet said, Insur akhaka zaliman aw madluman. But help your brother, help your brother while he is oppre oppressing and while he is oppressed. Whether he is oppressed or he is an oppressor. So the Sahaba said, We understand how we, we should help him when he is oppressed. How can we help him when he is oppressing himself, when he is an oppressor? He said, the Prophet said, help him by stopping him from oppressing. So, you stop him from oppression, uh, oppression, from oppressing or being unjust. How do you do that? Now, if someone is saying, if someone kills, the religion don't allow us to put him in prison. He is either to be killed or to pay the blood money. If someone commits sinna, he is either bitter, he is either married or not married, so either to be lashed or to be stoned to death. But if someone didn't kill yet, he says, I am going to kill. And after given advice, he insists that he is going to kill someone. We should stop him from killing. We put him in prison until, and we explain to him. When he says, yeah, I am fine, I understood now, we get him out. Maybe not if some hospital. Hospital in his house, if you have the keys to his house and you can, yeah, doesn't have, you don't have to have special place for that. In the mosque, and let people uh, watch over him. If someone says that I, someone is taking a drug, not many people can cure themselves, stop drug one go. You put him, lock him up until he takes his treatment and he's finished, you get him out. To stop him, not to punish him, to help him. To stop him from oppressing himself, from oppressing others. But why, how do we do this? With the hadith of the Prophet. It's not a creation. We don't go and start inventing in the religion. How do the, those who say Masalih Mursala use it? 
I give you an example. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, uh, or the Prophet, a man came to the Prophet and said, I had a relation with my wife in Ramadan. So the Prophet asked him. Uh, the Prophet gave him three things to do. <coughs> Can you, actually he started with this. Can you free a slave? He said, no. He said, can you fast 60 days? Now, some people, those who do mas this Masalih al-Mursala, the reforming in religion, they say, it's a king. A king who has thousands of slaves. <coughs> if he has a relation with his wife in Ramadan, you tell him you free a slave, he will do it every day. So what we do to him? If he ask about what he should do, we tell him, you have to fast 60 days, and then he will be afraid. He will not do it again. That is changing the religion. So like the people who say that if you, someone leaves a salah, he becomes a kafir? Is it yeah, some way? people, for example, don't believe that someone who leaves the salah is a kafir. And that is the truth. If someone doesn't pray, he is doing very big sin. Very, very big sin. But still he is not kafir. But some people will say he is kafir. Just to make people scared so they don't leave the prayer. Some people may... Now, the, uh, the Prophet has said that لا يحل دم مرئ مسلم إلا بأحد ثلاث The blood of a Muslim is not halal except for three reasons. If he kills someone, kills another Muslim, or he commit adultery, or he change the religion. But we know that if you go to some books of fiqh, some madahib who take maslaha mursala, kill him for any reason. Kill him for selling drug. Selling drug is like selling alcohol, it's haram. But you kill him because to stop other people from doing the same thing. <coughs> Killing a Muslim. A Muslim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمُ خَالِدًا فِيهَا وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ That the one who kills a Muslim intentionally, that Allah is angry, will be angry with him, and he will curse him, and he has reserved for him a, a severe punishment in Jahannam. For what? For reforming. Reform in religion, this Masalih Mursala, is in other way uh, perfecting the religion is to do the things that Allah has forgotten. This is the name of it. And Allah doesn't forget. The religion was completed when the Prophet was uh, before the death of the Prophet. If Allah wants to create the perfect uh, people, those who don't sin at all, and close all the gaps so they don't do any sin, he would have done that. It's very easy for him. But he wants to test people. Test people, to test the bad people and those who don't like uh, bad to be done. Test them by holding themselves and don't try to correct what he, what they think has forgotten. It's not, the, 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 for, the reform is to follow what Allah has said, not to pay, put yourself in trouble to save others, making what Allah has made, what Allah made haram halal or what Allah made haram halal. Even the Prophet didn't have that right. Ya ayyuhal nas, the Prophet said, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, innahu laysa li tahleelu ma haram Allah. It's not for me to make tahreemu ma ahal Allah. It's not for me to make haram what Allah has made halal. This is the Prophet. What we do we say about the people who come after him? Definitely they don't have the right to make halal what Allah has made haram or to make haram what Allah has made halal. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, uh, when he became a Khalifa, there is a place in Iraq called, called Wasit. And this place was known. The people in there were, like the people in this city, were very bad. Thieves, uh, killers. Uh, so these, he sent uh, a governor to that er this area. 
he sent him a letter asking him, said, people here are so bad. You can't just take these people and uh, look for, for proofs. If you try to look for proofs to punish them, you will never get proof. Everybody is bad. People uh, lie. You can't get people to testify. They don't testify against each other. Uh, they, they will swear. So you can do nothing with these people too. The only way is to catch these people is if we take them by suspicion. I mean, he means that you suspect someone, punish him. No. Allah has forbidden this in the religion to take people with suspicion. But that is the only way this man thought he can change these people to make the place better to make, to, by, by, by punishing people by, by, uh, just by suspicion. So Umar ibn Abdul Aziz wrote back to him. He said, punish the people according to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet. If they don't get reformed, may Allah never reform them. If someone doesn't get reformed by the book of Allah, let him not be reformed at all, ever. This is what Umar ibn Abdul Aziz told him. Actually, the man says that I did, I took the advice of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and he said, I didn't get out of that city until I can say that it was the best land in the, in the Islamic uh, in, in, in the Islamic Ummah at that time. He considered it to be uh, the best at his time. We have many uh, fuqaha. We don't, I don't know personally any uh, uh, tabi'i from Wasit or, but the, later on, Wasit was at the time of the Tabi'in. But the, later on, there were many muhaddithin and fuqaha from Wasit. Probably changed the name of the area. No, it's not the change of the name of the area. It's a question of the way uh, the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, the way when you deal with the religion, you don't look, you don't think, and uh, just do what Allah has said. Hmm? And, uh, <coughs> uh, and, and then you will be okay. You see, uh, if we, if the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, uh, the Prophet, if he has done reforms, probably when the Kafir, when he met with the Kafirs in Ghazwat uh, al-Ahzab, or if you look at what is going on on the land, uh, he, in that time probably it's for them allowed to go and uh, give up to the Kafirs, or to... Uh, sometime probably go to the kafirs and uh, make some uh, agreements with them huh? but you just have to do what Allah said huh? Allah ordered them to uh, follow his orders and to be patient if you look at it they have no chance they had no chance uh, at the Ghazwat al-Ahzab they had no chance they would have been in all if, if you look at it worldly wise huh? they are gone they lost but then Allah comes from where you don't expect. And that is how, uh, the, the, that is the religion. Is that you have to do what uh, uh, Allah has ordered you, as the English say, Allah work, work in mysterious way. <laughs> that is, you don't know. You just have uh, to do what Allah is do, uh, saying and then wait for uh, the, the, the solution will come from Allah. This is about the uh, Masalih Mursala.